Well hello and welcome. My name is Peter Waters. Thank you for joining the Waters and Stanton video channel. Today, uh, April the 28th, is a day when we remembered all those in the NHS that had sadly died um, in their um, uh, duty as NHS doctors, nurses, uh, porters, etc. And we had one minute silence. Ham radio wise, um, there's a lot of uh, operation on the ham bands. I think a lot of operators, um, for various reasons, whether it be age or underlying health conditions, are uh, under lockdown. And I'm one of those that, uh, because of my age, um, uh, cannot uh, <laughs> go out and go in the garden, that's about it. Um, but I think the good thing about it is amateur radio is a hobby that um, is all about communication. And one of the good things about that hobby is that uh, even though you can't really perhaps leave your home, you can actually talk to friends around the country, around the world, with like-minded interests, which is good. Um, at Waters of Santa we've been sending lots of antennas and bits and pieces. Uh, it's quite obvious that the weather has now improved and also with time on their hands a lot of operators decided to improve or put up new antennas. Um, equipment wise the IC7300 still <laughs> seems to uh, be the uh, flavour of the month on HF. The IC9700 likewise for the VHF UHF operator. And for those that want a radio that covers DC to light, well, the FT991A still um, is very popular, and of course there's a, there's a deal on that at the moment with the cashback. I've been out in the garden and uh, playing about with antennas again. <laughs> you know, one of the things you realise is that um, there's nothing that new in antennas, really. It's all been done before. All, all, all antennas, by and large, are variations on some basic common themes. And uh, I can remember when I was a, a lad, when I was first licensed back in 1960, um, I was playing around with nested dipoles, and uh, also I had um, several verticals that I played around with, and I, I, I added, added elements to the vertical, so I had two and three elements on a vertical difficult to do because you you couldn't do it, you, do, you couldn't use a metal mast you had to have something which was non-conductive I think I strapped some garden canes together and fabricated a two or three element um, a vertical but uh, <laughs> I think it worked anyway I, I can't remember now but I remember doing it and um, I published a video recently um, uh, about a, well, I called it an L antenna. It was a simple wire antenna, vertical wire, and a, and a, a resonant uh, a counterpoise ground play. Uh, and it, I mean, it works. It worked well. It should work. It, you know, it, there's no reason why it shouldn't work. And uh, I've worked some decks, and I, I know a number of um, operators have sort of also built it and uh, enjoyed the, the results they got. But I thought, well, what about adding an extra element that I, as I used to do as, as a lad. Uh, with fiberglass um, poles, of course, it's it's somewhat easier. But uh, well, <coughs> let's go out in the garden. Let's go out in the garden and uh, into the sunshine. I think anybody that's watched my videos realises that um, I'm very much a one-man band. I stand in front of the camera and I stand behind the camera. But it's in uh, days like this when you're outside and you're fiddling about with the camera and you suddenly discover sort of nature that you perhaps you've taken advantage of. I know there's been a lot of discussion about this recently but um, I had my uh, camera on in the garden a few days ago uh, late one evening you know it was it was about an hour or so before sunset and I was quite amazed at the bird sounds. I mean let me just show you the uh, camera setup. You can see here it's a uh, Nothing special. I have got a uh, uh, what they call a dead cat <laughs> on there to try and get rid of the wind noise. Um, but apart from that, it's a, it's a bulk standard sort of video setup, I suppose. Uh, the only thing is that the microphone is sort of a semi-rifle microphone, so it's, it's quite directional. 
but it's very good for picking up the birds. Let me play you just a few seconds of um, what I recorded the other evening. It's quite, <laughs> it's quite pleasant and uh, quite relaxing, and uh, I suppose something that uh, you tend to notice more when uh, we're in lockdown and it's quite quiet. Well, that's the nature bit. <laughs> Would you believe it's raining now? So back inside again. Anyway, enough of uh, the uh, bird songs, back to ham radio. I'm gonna put up on the screen now um, a very simple drawing of the dual band vertical that um, I've been playing around with. One of the things that I've learnt over the years is whenever you nest dipoles or verticals, there's an interaction, uh, even with just two bands, there's interaction because the elements are so close together. As you increase the number of elements, so the interaction gets more of a problem. And it means to say that a quarter wave length, um, in theory, is no longer a quarter wave length in practice because the elements are so close to each other. The way to reduce that is to actually move the elements apart. Now, the most sensitive part of, for example, a quarter wave vertical is the end, the voltage end, right at the top of the antenna. And you can demonstrate this quite easily. If you happen to have a uh, QRP rig and you've got a short loaded vertical antenna, say it's, I don't know, two meters long and it's operating on 20 meters, Put your hand near the base of the antenna where the loading coil is and you'll find there's very little difference. Now move your hand to near the top of the aerial and you'll find that your hand only has to start to approach the top of the aerial and you hear the signals going down. In other words, the most sensitive part of a quarter wave is the end of the aerial, the top of the aerial, the voltage point. The way to um, reduce that effect is to move them apart. And you'll see in the drawing that I've got, I've moved the tops of the antennas as far apart as I can. Now, in practice, I've used a space of about, um, I think it's about 70 centimeters, something like that. <laughs> it was actually dictated by the length of the plastic um, top section that I get. But anyway, um, Bear in mind that you need to try and keep those top sections as far apart as possible because that makes tuning adjustments so much easier. It means to say well, if you adjust one antenna, the other antenna will not be affected nearly so much as it would be if it was quite close together. So let's talk about construction. Uh, I've got a fiberglass um, spider pole down the uh, garden which um, I've spoken about before, and it's it's very it's a very good antenna. It's very robust, and it's uh, uh, self-supporting, provided that uh, you've got a, a reasonable base for it. In this case, you only need to go up around about um, uh, what five meters or so <coughs> to um, support the uh, antenna. The cross section, um, I got a piece of plastic, um, right-angled. Um, uh, material, I suppose it's the sort of thing you might put on stairs to protect them anyway. I think I've got that from B&Q. And I decided that uh, what I would do is I'd drill it, um, draw two holes in it and use a U-bolt that I had had around, which you'll see on the screen here. Um, unfortunately, the problem there was that the U-bolt was really bigger than I wanted. So in order to clamp it to the fiberglass mast, I had to use one of the thicker sections. So it meant to say that I had to 
um, fasten off the thinner top sections and then raise, raise the mast so that I could clamp onto a lower but um, larger diameter section. Um, that worked reasonably well uh, but I wasn't happy with the actual way that the U-bolt was gripping to the mast and in any case what I really wanted was to um, uh, use the upper section, the thinner section of the mast. So I then looked around and I found um, a, a bit of plastic tubing. Uh, it's a pipe joiner actually, which um, uh, you'll, I think you'll see in the uh, uh, video here. But uh, I drilled it, I drilled the center of this pipe, um, uh, this pipe joiner, so that it would just slip over the top section of the mast, in other words, the thinner section at the top. Well, this is what I finished up with. Um, it's a bit of a Heath Robinson affair, but I had to use the materials that I could find in my garage. And I don't have a large stock of materials in my garage. I do, however, however have um, some pipe joiners, which um, I've used. And uh, I think I've already mentioned this um, this uh, right angle plastic um, section here which uh, I got from B&Q. What I've done, um, I've drilled this large pipe joiner such that the top section of the um, fiberglass pole will go through it. I've put a little washer underneath so it sits snugly and that is sitting on the next section down so that pipe can't go any lower, it's, it's, it's uh, sitting on the next section down. And then the only easy way I could find of attaching this right angle was to use a couple of tie wraps and they're small tie wraps as well, they're not big ones, I should have used bigger ones but I haven't got bigger ones. But it provides the basis for proving the system. And as I am, and I'm sure a lot of you are at the moment, you've got to make the best of what you've got. I wouldn't expect this to weather during the winter, but it does provide a template for something uh, better um, and enables me to prove the system. I'm sure that a lot of you have got much better ideas than I have. I'm not an engineer by any, any stretch of imagination. I'm not, not involved. I'm not mechanically minded really at all. But when we're in lockdown, <laughs> you just sit there and you think, there's got, got to be a way of doing it. So, and this is the way I've come up with. So, um, as I say, it's a bit of a Heath Robinson system, but it does the job, which is uh, the whole point of the exercise. So there we are. That's the, uh, the 20 meter and 15 meter antenna. Thinking about it, uh, I probably should have gone for 20 meters and 17 meters, because uh, 17 meters is starting to open up occasionally now. I did have some contacts on 15 meters at the weekend, but uh, generally speaking, that band is uh, not terribly active at the moment because we're so far down the sunspot cycle. Um, as regards radials, um, I put down uh, three uh, random length uh, uh, radials on the ground, and um, they were about well, I don't know, seven or eight meters long each one, I suppose. Um, and that worked fine on both those bands. Um, I tend to prefer non-resonant radials um, because, uh, uh, well, it's one <laughs> one less thing to adjust anyway, and uh, they seem to work uh, well enough for me. So that's the uh, that's the antenna. Nothing terribly exciting, terribly exciting, but it does give you two bands, and it does enable you to get out in the garden and uh, mess about with antennas. I've got some other ideas which I'll uh, talk about uh, on uh, future videos. But in the meantime, thank you for watching this video, appreciate it. I know we get um, uh, views now from all over the world, so I appreciate that. Um, I can't uh, answer all the comments, by the way, because I just haven't got the time. <laughs> uh, I need a secretary. No, I, I, I do read all the comments, but I can't respond to all of them now because there's, there's just too many uh, to respond to and uh, not enough time in the day because I am actually working uh, during the day as well. Uh, if you enjoy the videos please press the subscribe button and appreciate you um, joining me and uh, in the meantime enjoy your ham radio, keep safe, see you soon.